How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Finally heading back to the shop. Hopefully we got some fun stuff to work on down there. <clears throat> Heard we might have a couple hydraulic cylinders we have to rebuild. I know that we have a couple final drives for a D400 we got to get rebuilt. But anyway, just heading down to the shop. And it is cold, icy, and I'm sure Casey's going to have his work cut out for him with towing. Oh, we're rolling up to the shop now. I guess let's see who's here. <clears throat> 25 brisk degrees outside. Let's see. Well, the gate's open. I don't see the heater on. The forklift is right in the middle of the driveway, so that's good. Oh yeah, it's cold outside. Guess I'll go inside the office and see what kind of rebuild parts and components and whatever tasks I gotta do today. I guess we'll see what happens. All right guys, so we're back in the shop and today we're gonna be re rebuilding a 938 G hydraulic tilt cylinder. So basically it goes, it's for the front of the boom and it makes the bucket go up and down. Here's the cylinder right here. So you can tell it's, it's we, we washed it, but it's been leaking. We're gonna go ahead, take this guy all the way apart, reseal it, put it back together, paint it, and it should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and I'll get this, get a strap over here. I'm gonna get a strap through this eyelet, strap through this eyelet, lift it up. We're gonna swing it over the top of the grater and onto the cylinder bench. Gonna go ahead and fire up our crane. Like that, you see the green light? Hit the power, and we'll look up there. It should make a little clicking sound. There it goes. I'm just gonna use the crane to pick up the cylinder. So right now we're going north on the remote. All right, perfect. I'll get this strap around both eyelets and we'll pick up the cylinder. thing up where these caps are at down here. Hopefully this rod doesn't go in and blow the rest of the hydraulic fluid out and make a mess. That does. This is actually going to come off. This is a positioner so when people are going into piles where rock piles are or whatever, um, I, I believe it's like an automatic lift or automatic tilt. I don't remember exactly but that's going to come off. this guy over. Here we go. Come on now. Really? Right, here we go. So what I'm gonna do now is lay this cylinder rod in first this way 
and then the barrel is gonna go into here and we're gonna tie it in with a piece of all thread. So I'll go ahead and swing this over. first into here and secure it down. Nice and easy. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a board here and just lay this down for now. Okay cylinder is positioned how we want it. I have these clamps right here. And what we're going to do is take this piece of thread. We're going to put it through these clamps, through this eyelet, and that's basically going to clamp the cylinder into place. And the cool thing about this cylinder bench is it moves in and out. So right here, this is the second piece. This is the first piece. And this piece actually moves out and all the way back in using this hydraulic ram. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to hook a chain to this end over here through this. And we're basically gonna pull this cylinder apart. And you can do it by hand, but this is a lot easier. So we're gonna take, uh, let's see, we'll get these off, get these bolts out, get this positioner off, hook up this with part, probably a strap or a chain pull this cylinder apart, and then we'll get inside to the seals here. I'm gonna go ahead and get our all thread here. Into the cylinder. Have this other wing nut on. Crap. Don't cross it on a feller. of the barrel, the bolts out of the barrel, and pull this thing apart. Go ahead and hook our hair up. Click down, we're all in. We'll go ahead and hook up the gun. Got our other end. Come over here. I should have the gun ready, yep. It's that 36 from last time. We'll go ahead and we'll zip all the bolts out of the head of this cylinder. Okay, hooked up. There we go. Okay. A little more. Okay. Off there. Try to loop this back to that position. We're gonna, what we're wanna, gonna wanna do too is make sure that we mark this head and the barrel so that way when we take this head off, we know exactly where the port was, where the oil feeds out because this will probably clock any way we want it to go. 
we just want to make sure we put it back in the right spot so when the customer gets it they're not like whoa you sent me the wrong thing so we're gonna mark these with a punch and then make sure we get this head back on correctly got our punches right here they're spring loaded this will help us really easily stake that head in that barrel so we know exactly where it goes so we're just gonna stake it right here just like that and right there just like that and it puts two little marks it's kind of hard to see on camera but i can see them got two little marks right there that'll make sure that this goes right here in this exact position so now with our cylinder secured to the bench, I got it tied down here. It's a little loose, that doesn't really matter. Just as long as it holds it down, I'm gonna hook a piece of rope through here, or rope, but a strap, rated strap, through there and here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the cylinder apart. Okay, everything's hooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and fire the bench up and we'll get this thing pulled apart. So this is my hydraulic power unit. This is what powers the bench. <clears throat> it's got a high, big hydraulic motor right here, a big reservoir that holds all the hydraulic fluid. Uh, this is your pump right here, your valves, and the bench is actually operated uh, by a pilot valve over there. So the first thing we're gonna do, it's gonna get a little loud. We're gonna fire this thing up. We're then going to use this lever right here and it's going to push that bench out. Had some small te technical difficulties. I forgot that this spool right here activates that cylinder and I had this pulled up. You got to use a pair of pliers, but this was pulled in the up position which the only the cylinder was working and the bench was not moving. So now if you look, we're moving and we're going to get tight here in a second. We're going to start pulling the cylinder apart. We're going to be careful here that we don't overstress the bench, which it shouldn't be too bad, but here we go. Slowly pulling this thing out. I'm also watching my chain. I'm making sure I'm not going way too tight on the chain. Okay, here we go. We're starting to pull the cylinder. I think should come apart here in a second. I forgot to tighten this down, so we're gonna have to put some bolts through here and tighten this plate down because unfortunately it's just pulling this whole thing over there. So I'll put some bolts in this, we'll be right back. Alright, I got these secured nice and tight, tight over here. That's gonna be enough to hold this plate down for sure. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get the crane now over here. And the crane, I'm gonna put a strap through here and I'm gonna support this rod. That way when we pull it all the way out, it doesn't fall to the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up our crane again. Okay, I just heard the click. Here we go. Bring us over. We're gonna go east. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go down. Now I'm going to get us a nice strap, go through here, and get it as close to the head as possible. Let's go over here to the... Here, this is the perfect strap right here. Got our strap. We're now going to go around the cylinder rod, up and over. Going to go ahead and lower this down. OK. 
Okay, lower it into position. Only one chain is needed. Perfect. Then we'll go back up. Nice and easy. Okay. We need to go south. Get this as close to the head as possible. Yeah, got to go down a little bit. Yep. Perfect, just like that. Go up, make it taut. Okay, we're ready to fire the bench back up, pull this thing all the way apart. All right, the bench is fired up again. We're gonna go ahead and pull it all the way apart. Let's get the last bolt out of it. All right, last bolt is out. Now it should come apart. We have to hook our chain back up. shut the bench off and we'll get this over to this end of the table where we're going to take this nut off. So I went and I got a, a socket out of the tool shed. I believe it says three, three and a half. Three and a half. <clears throat> Goes right onto the nut. Perfectly. I'm gonna try it the easy way first. We're gonna get the one inch gun out. We're gonna see if it'll just rattle off. If it does, sweet. Then we don't have to use that and it'll just, this will be way faster, but try it the easy way first. If not, then we'll get the ram going. Okay, this is first shot with the one inch gun. See how it works out for us. Oh. Hoping we wouldn't have to do that, but we're gonna have to secure the rod better, at least, a little better. All right, rod's secured better. Let's go for it again. I'm gonna try tightening up that rod a little bit better. Get, make sure there's no play in it. Okay. Looks like we're gonna have to bust out the ram. So I'll go ahead. I'll get us a one inch breaker bar. We'll get uh, the piece for the ram and we'll go ahead and we'll get this thing torn off. All right, so I got us a wrench that I believe will work that we're gonna hook up to the cylinder. So what I need to do now is I need to fire the bench back up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch these gauges. So this goes up to 5,000 PSI. I'm gonna watch this gauge and see how far this goes up before it starts taking the nut off. And what that's doing is basically that's my torque, right? So when I'm taking the nut off, Whatever this stops at is what I'm gonna set it back to when we go to tighten it back up.
Okay, we were able to get the nut to go with the hydraulic ram. And it looks like it spiked when I was looking. It set it right at about 500. So, what we're gonna do, when we go to put the cylinder back together, we're gonna make sure that we take the one inch gun, we're gonna set it with the one inch, just to make sure it's tight. Then we're gonna go back with the ram and we're gonna set it at 500 PSI because that's what it was set at when we took it off. So that should in theory give us the same foot pounds of what it was set at before. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the nut off. We'll pull the piston, we'll pull the head and we'll get on to resealing it. All right, so I've been working on getting this nut loose. It's come loose, but it's still pretty fairly tight. So we're gonna go ahead, light the torch up, keep this up, and it should spin this thing right off. So I was able to get the nut off, a uh, little bit of heat, burn the Loctite out of it. You can see the threads in there. They still look like they're in pretty good shape. We'll clean this guy up with a wire wheel. Got the head off. All of our seals are in here. Not sure how well you can see in there, but we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna pick these seals out. I'll just bring you in closer here. I got my picks. I'm just gonna do one at a time here. Be careful to watch exactly where these went and what orientation they went in. All right, there's one out. So we have our buffer, our backup. Okay, go ahead and get this guy out of there. Okay, so this is the direction that it was in when we pulled it out. Went just like that. So we're gonna stack that, make sure that goes in the back. Then I guess we can pull this guy out. And then steel there, we're good. Looks like we got a big snap ring here that holds this guy in. Go ahead and get some snap ring pliers and I'll be right back and we'll get this guy out of here. Alright, got our snap ring pliers. Go ahead and we'll stick it right here. We'll attempt. Get the snap ring out of here. There's 
one side. Got it. There it is. And then we'll see how it goes getting this guy out. Probably gonna have to use an air chisel or something to lift that guy out of there. Well, try this guy. Probably ain't gonna work. Nah, we're gonna do this the easy way. Get an air chisel, bust that thing out of there. There it goes, got it. Go ahead, we'll get this thing really clean. All right, so what I have down here, solvent sprayer and our head that we're gonna get cleaned up. Bring you in closer. So basically this is attached in here. This is a five gallon bucket of solvent. You have your air that goes into here and this sprays out a mist of solvent. Just like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna douse the head and solvent. Get this thing completely clean. And then we're gonna use our brush get everything perfectly clean and then we'll clean we'll make it spotless with a wire wheel when we're done with the solvent and getting most of the crud off of it all right i've got our new seals i'm gonna go ahead take a pick i did miss one buffer seal in here go ahead and get that guy pulled out of there looks like that basically this just supports the rod when it goes in and out got our new one Make sure that area is clean. Yeah, we look good in there. Should just snap right in. Perfect. Perfect fit. Now what we'll do is we'll flip this over and we will take, so this is the other one we have. And what we always, what I always try to remember is, uh, I'm not sure if you can tell here, but there's a lip on the seal the lip always goes towards the pressure and the pressure is if your easy way to think about it is towards the barrel usually so we're going to stick it in this way with the lip going down towards the pressure bring it closer here all right and these really suck to put in sometimes but we'll We'll get it in there. Okay. Perfect. So we're in there. This is our new backup. Pretty close. Should work just fine. Get that guy installed. Perfect. Okay, we're in there. Got our new seals installed. Head is done. Hold it up so you guys can see it. Oh, it's not done. We have two more on the outside to get. Go ahead and we'll pick these off. So we have our white one right here. See, is there more to that? So we have our white guy and then the black O-ring. Yeah, see there's a there's three here, so let's see where well okay, so this guy we'll take off first. Okay. may want to clean that off really quick with I'm gonna go ahead and get our wire wheel and just clean that up a little bit so that's 
that's perfectly clean now. Now we'll go ahead and we'll take the sew ring off. Okay. Okay, this head is all redone. That's all good. And then inside of here, oh, we got stuff flying. Oh, <laughs> messed up again. We need to finish our wiper seal. So here's our wiper. We'll go ahead and we'll get that guy in there. Well, I took two seconds to look around and found the right tool. So, bearing installer worked just fine. We'll hammer it in. Perfect. More level. Okay, we're all installed there. Level. We'll get our snap ring because we have that guy. Where did I put the snap ring? There's our snap ring. We'll grab our snap ring pliers. Okay. Now we're done. We'll set this aside and then we'll get the piston done. So here's our piston. Super easy. Take these buffer seals off, replace them, and then you're done. So let's go to our buffer seals. Okay. Here's our buffer seal. And our other one is right here. So go ahead and open these guys up. This guy right here. Okay, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna clean it up with the wire wheel just a little bit. Get this guy off. And then I'll go and I'll get this guy off. Wire wheel it. Time to put a new o-ring in this sometimes these can really suck but it's kind of a smaller cylinder so probably can muscle it sometimes you got to put these in like a yeah that worked went right on and then our buffer is going to go over that just like that clicks right in grab our other buffer clicks right on okay our head and our piston are good to go. This guy I got cleaned up. I'm gonna hit it with a wire wheel a little bit. Then we'll get some red Loctite and we'll slam it back on there. Should be good to go. Clean this up a little bit with the wire wheel. Just chase the threads here with a pick. Just make sure there's no debris or crap in them. Okay, threads are good. We'll go ahead, we'll get this stuff back on the cylinder and sign it back together. All right, we're back on the cylinder bench. Our rod is right here. First thing we gotta put on is the head. So I'm gonna set this over out of the way. Grab your favorite lube. 
we're gonna lube that rod up okay just like this got our head we're gonna slide it right over Got to get us a uh, mallet and we'll smack the head the rest of the way on. Got my favorite mallet. We'll go ahead, we'll smack the head the rest of the way on. Okay. See if it still rotates. Yep, it still rotates, so that's good. Hold to keep. We're pretty close. Hold to keep hammering through it. Okay. It's like that. Okay, heads on. I'm gonna slide this back a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and push this on enough. Now we can get our piston on. Can't forget our little washer in the piston. We may have to buff this a little bit. We'll just try giving it a little tickle with the mallet. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take a wire wheel. I'm gonna wire wheel these threads, get all the junk out of them, and we'll go ahead and we'll reset the torque on this nut. All right, I got our wire wheel out. You can see all the junk in the threads there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get <laughs> the wheel on there and we'll clean it out. Perfect, nice and clean. We'll test fit the nut and see if it slides all the way on. All right, so when I got us a uh, red Loctite, it is 27140 is the part number. Got the nut on the cylinder, working out nice and easy. It spins on there like it should. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply Loctite, red Loctite to the threads right here. We'll fire the bench back up, use the ram, and set it back to 500 PSI to where it was, and then we'll go ahead and we'll reinstall it into that barrel. Yeah, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Spin this guy on there. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. Then we'll go ahead and we'll get our air gun. And this is just gonna help us get it tight <clears throat> to get it onto the bench and set it correctly. So we're gonna give this a couple wax. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get the bench fired up and then we'll set this nut. All right, got us hooked up. Got our wrench on, power unit is on. <clears throat> Gonna tighten down this chain binder really quick, or this come along. Okay, we're tight there. Can we go ahead. All right, go again. Watch our gauge. There's 500, okay. 
There's 500. Set it back down. We're at 500. This is set tight. We'll go ahead and we'll recheck it with a one inch just to make sure we're good to go. And then we'll get it back in that barrel. I'm gonna go ahead and wire wheel all the schmoo off this thing really quick. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out with a couple rags. Then we'll get the rod and the head into the barrel and finished up. Hell yeah. And remote, lift this guy up. Maybe you can see me a little bit better. Okay. And there's our three dots. And our three dots right here. So, go ahead and we'll spin that guy in there. Perfect. And sometimes you gotta kinda wrestle these things in. So, I'll move this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get our big mallet. Whack this thing in there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, cut all the bolts, I got all the threads cleaned, clean the inside of the threads. I'm gonna get these all zipped back up, collapse the head, or collapse the rod, and then we'll go ahead and we'll fly it back over, put it on a pallet, get it ready to be steam cleaned and painted. Sweet. Go ahead, get our long strap that we have over here, and we'll fly this thing out of here. We're gonna lay this thing down, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll get it on a pallet and get it ready for paint and cleaning. Well, there you have it. That's how I reseal a hydraulic cylinder here at Iron King. And usually I, I usually just leave them the way they came off the machine until I put new seals in them, do the bearings, all that kind of stuff. Just because you're dealing with so much oil and if you can see my hand right now, it's just covered in schmoo and oil. I make sure the seals are clean. I make sure the barrel's clean, put it together. Then I'll clean it. Then I'll paint it. Cause if what's the point of me cleaning it, painting it, and then putting seals in it, and then putting it on our bench and getting it all dirty and marking up the paint. Do all the do all the hard stuff first. We'll get this thing cleaned up. We'll get it painted in the next video. I'll make sure that I show you the finished product, but this is pretty much what it looks like when we're done, is a resealed hydraulic cylinder. Uh, I have the grease seals for this too. I'm not gonna show that just because it's, it's so easy to replace them. But all the internal packing is redone. Uh, the nut is torqued to the correct torque spec. Uh, the rod looks really good. It's all clean on the inside. All we gotta do is paint it and it's ready to go. Guys, I really appreciate you watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to this video if you liked it. I got many more to come. Thanks guys, see ya. Oh, and another thing too, we got a dead forklift. So you guys wanna see a forklift revival. I think the starter died and I went to go take off and wash a, go to the wash bay and uh, yeah. He just clicks. So anyway, stay tuned for the next one. Later.